Okay, let's actually start coding in some of our assets here. And this is going to be a portrait game, so we definitely want to set that to portrait only. Take the landscape off and head over to here to our scene. And of course, this is our uh, first class to actually do anything. As I uh, mentioned before in the uh, previous videos, the uh, the view control and the app delegate we largely just get to ignore. The view controller just has this one reference, well, actually two references to CS my scene, and uh, really all it does is it just gets uh, gets the party started. And of course, in your final game, you do want to uh, set uh, show FPS to no and show nodes count uh, to no as well. All right, so uh, let's take out what we don't need, and we definitely don't need the uh, the labels back there. We actually don't even need to worry about setting that background color. And then, as for the uh, the touches began, I think we can actually get rid of all of this as well, because when we do touch down the screen, regardless of where it is or how many touches, we're just going to have our uh, little guy jump. So. Don't need to uh, evaluate the location or anything like that. So, all right, we've pretty much got as uh, clean of a slate as we can get here. And let's worry about getting all of our children added in there. So, we are going to type SK sprite node. Let's see, and let's just call this uh, landscape. So, that will be the first thing we put in there. And SK sprite node, sprite node with image named. And Put the at symbol and then in quotes we're going to put in here landscape because if you remember that's what we called our um, asset landscape right so we got those and you don't have to put in the dot png there and we're going to write landscape dot position this is going to equal uh, cg point make and of course um, we could just uh, hard code in here any value that we wanted uh, another quick way to uh, put an image right in the middle of the screen and that is exactly where we want that because this image itself is the same exact size as the uh, iPad dimensions which are uh, in this case in portrait mode that's 768 by 1024 so again what we could do is we could write 768 divided by 2 and 1024 divided by 2 but you can also put in CG rect and get mid X and then you commit self dot frame and we do the same thing here uh, get mid y and self dot frame because the class or the scene class itself here does have a uh, a frame to it and get in the middle of x and the y and it'll put us right in the middle all of your uh, images or your sprites um, are centered in the middle that in mind. All right, then we just write self add child and put in here landscape. And uh, for those of you curious, there's if you were to hit escape over here, there's actually uh, no other completions. Whereas in Cocos 2D, you had this exact same exact line, uh, and it had a, a Z property to put in your uh, Z index. So you could put in like something like 40, and then you also had a, a tag property. And you could put it put in a uh, a tag here, which uh, we don't actually have in Sprite Kit, but you do have your Z properties, which are um, which are set doing this Z position. And then you can put in here any number. Um, by default, it's just I'm assuming it's just at zero, so uh, we don't need to do that. But uh, what we can do with uh, one of our other images later is actually explicitly set the Z position to be. Um, behind the railing and that'll be for the boulder all right so next thing we'll do is and actually we should just test this let's uh, go ahead give that a ye old test run here just to make sure everything is okay and while it is publishing I should mention there is a um, aligned self insert child at index but that's a little bit different than the Z property I believe it has to do with the the ordering of how the um, ordering of how uh, the code processes or enumerates through the children. I need to look in that line just a little bit more, but I did notice. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think this is actually affecting the uh, the visual depth. Okay, so it's 
for some reason taken forever. Load that in. Now I'm curious. Insert. Uh, insert child. Let's see. Oop. I had a little hit there. Simulator is still running. Uh, yeah, let's do child nodes. Okay. All right, so uh, let's make this not so big, but obviously I can tell right away that uh, it has come in here about the right size. I mean, in the right position. Okay, so next up, let's do our ch our character, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in here self add child, and I'm gonna do that tricky little thing where I put a method inside of here, and this will be called self create character okay so we've got this and that means that we need to write a method called create character and if you already put in void like I just did go ahead and take that out because I forgot we are actually going to return to ourselves a sk sprite node otherwise what are we actually adding here Okay, this method needs to return something that's going to be added. And let's begin. I, in fact, you know what? We can get away with copying a lot of this. Paste that down there. Uh, we don't need the add child line because that's exactly what that's doing right there. And for this, let's put in here character and believe that was character base right character base yep and then as for the position we're gonna put this at 360 for the X and 570 for the Y uh, we do want to give our character an actual name that we can identify him with later so we put in here dot name and again, this is um, just going to be a string value here, so we always do that uh, add symbol. And character seems like a good name. Uh, and of course, it is also the same name uh, that we're giving this instance variable. But um, in, the, uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, anywhere outside of this method, um, that instance variable name doesn't really exist. Okay, so. But our name property will exist. And two sprites can have the same name. But in this case, we're just going to have uh, one name, of course, because there's only one character. All right, and then, then for the Z position, let's just go ahead and put that up at um, 100. Again, if, if things are getting put in a default, at a default value of 0, then um, 100 is obviously 100 levels above that, so it's kind of unnecessary considering we probably only have uh, you know seven or eight nodes uh, on at the same time. But... Um, that's okay and then uh, return character all right so again we return this character from this right here and it's a SK sprite node uh, that uh, that should be running so let's or that should be working so let's uh, test it make sure and sure enough there he is he's uh, He's hanging out on top of there. I'm gonna make the scale just a little bit bigger so we can get a good look at him. All right, cool. Continuing on, let's go back up here to this method. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and get in the, one of the boulders next. So I'm gonna write self. And I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you here. Check this out. Instead of add child, I'm gonna put perform selector. And I'm gonna write at selector. The selector is um, this part of your uh, your method name. So when you write perform selector, you can also just think of this as like you're just calling a method, all right? And uh, the selector name here is gonna be create Boulder, so it's very similar to what we just had. Create character, and the uh, the reason that we're writing it like this, you'll see in just a moment, is uh, 
I'm gonna put with object nil so there's no objects coming along with this. Basically, I'm not passing in any other parameters or anything like that. And uh, after delay, that's what I want. So I don't want that boulder to come in right away. Uh, we do, and you know, in my test versions I had one second, but let's give it two more seconds in here. Uh, because we want people to kind of settle into the, the graphics of the game before we start throwing things at them, which is essentially what our boulder is doing, right? And another reason I'm writing it like this too is I want to be able to call uh, this same line again uh, later on at a random interval, okay? So might as well just use this to, um, selector right away. So uh, let's do that same thing that we had before and actually this one we're just starting with void create folder and uh, if you remember when I was breaking apart uh, images for this I had the uh, the boulder and the shadow separated so we're gonna um, create two elements inside of this one method just add both of them to the scene and it's gonna be a little bit easier if I um, go ahead and establish early on what my starting point is going to be for um, these elements okay so I'm going to put CG point start point and then CG point make 760 and 580 of course I've already figured out where the uh, the location should be for all this um, and our uh, our shadow is just going to be about 60 pixels below this point all right, so this is where our boulder is going to start at, and then we just do a little bit of math on that uh, to figure out where the shadow should be at. All right, so SK sprite node, uh, we're just doing exactly what we've been doing in the past to create these. SK sprite node, sprite node with image named, and again, just put in here shadow. That's what we uh, have in the assets library. And uh, shadow dot position is going to be CG point make. Now I'm going to put in here start point dot x, and that will be unchanged. But start point dot y is what I'm going to subtract 60, 60 pixels from. Okay, and this is nice too because once everything gets coded, if I if I do realize I need to make some changes, I can just do that in this one place instead of having to make two changes. Okay. All right, shadow dot name equals shadow, and oh, what's going on there? <laughs> Let me return. There we go. Uh, shadow dot x scale. This is another property that um, we haven't played with yet, but. Uh, the the source images source image that I put in here is a is a little bit um, not wide enough so let's go ahead and just make the x scale times 1.5 and that's just going to stretch it out only on the x axis your range here or your default value I should say is 1.0 so if you made it uh, well zero you wouldn't see it at all if you made it 0.5 that would be half as wide as the default so 1.5 is about 150 percent the uh, the normal size and then uh, shadow dot Z position I'm going to just set this up to one and then I'm going to write self add child shadow so it's going to actually get it onto the uh, stage and consider this too that uh, this uh, create boulder statement is something that we're going to run again and again and again and again and there could be two boulders on the scene at once, and they could both have uh, the well. They could have that same name in there. So shadow and uh, coming up, we're gonna have boulder. So they could appear twice. There's no problems with that. I did just mention that a moment ago. Come to think of it, uh, boulder is our next one to put on here. And you know, at this point, we could probably start to just copy some things in here. Let's do this. I don't need to change the x scale, but uh, z position is going to be two for that, and we don't need to subtract the y. Otherwise, I think 
we're good to go. All right, and I'm gonna put a little note here um, after adding the children. We want to call this same method again at a random interval. So we need a random number, and we're gonna put in here float random num equals arc for a random uniform. All right, put that in. It's just uh, kind of a fancy term for, and really all it's doing is it's just gonna give us a, a range of random numbers based on the number that I put in here. So uh, if I put in here three, it could uh, potentially give me zero, one, or two. And then what I'm gonna do is add to this plus three. So if it did spit back zero, I'm gonna add on three seconds to that. Uh, if it gave me one, uh, it would be four seconds. If it gave me two, then we're gonna add three again, so it's five seconds. And uh, you can just change this uh, this number depending on how quickly you want those boulders to come out. All right, so if you want one to potentially come out every second, you could do that. Um, three seconds, I think, is uh, good as your minimum. Okay, and you know this is not the world's greatest little game but uh there it, I, I have caught myself like prematurely hitting the the jump button because i thought a uh, a boulder was eminent all right and then I, when i did that of course it uh, wasn't and uh, came out and i ran into it so you know there's there's something to be said for for a little bit slowing it down just a tad and, and uh, letting people get kind of psyched out that they have to Get ready for it. All right, so again, actually, let's do this. Instead of typing this all the way out, let's uh, go and just take self perform selector. Just copy that down there, and then what we want to do is take that hard coded time of 2.0 seconds and just replace it by our random num. And uh, if that seems a little strange to you, that a method can call itself, well, um, don't let that be strange. It's uh, just one of the things you can do with coding, okay? So essentially this one line right here really starts this kind of a engine or cycle of boulders coming out because um, it'll run through here and then it'll go back to the top again after a certain amount of time. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run this. And uh, what we're, <laughs> of course what you're not seeing is the boulders travel across the screen. But it is uh, probably putting, yeah, well, there it is. Let me move this down a little bit. You'll see your nodes just ticking upward over here over time, right? Because now it's going to 14, it should go to 16 next. We're just piling them all on top of there, okay? And we could put a log statement in here so we could see that uh, we've added another boulder, but I don't think that's necessary because in a moment um, we're gonna shift all those boulders off to the side of the stage uh, but uh, now what else do we need to do well we got to put our railing in here and um, I think you guys have seen me create enough of these sprites that um, I'm just gonna copy that code in here so we've got uh, railing that's our railing the railing position I've already figured out it should be that uh, the Z position well let's just put this at 50 since we had something else at 100 it just seems might as well put it at 50. So it's visually going to be above the uh, the boulder and the uh, boulder shadow, which are at a Z position of one and two. And then our um, we're just adding the child on here. So one more time, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. And uh, afterwards, I'll uh, come back in another video where we will work on moving those boulders across the stage. other things ahead of us of course we have lots of actions to uh, yep there we go so it's uh, getting added uh, in there all right let's uh, let's come back for more fun but uh, we've got uh, our primary elements in place